Grade 8, Chapter 2, Final on Ratios, Rates, and Proportional Reasoning of all the tests we've written this year. I believe this test was the uh, lowest class average of all of the tests we've done so far to date. So there are a lot of people making a lot of mistakes. So uh, as we go through this right now, you're not going to have time probably to copy everything down meticulously. But copy down as much as you can and then watch the video later on. Press pause, copy things down. Remember how things are supposed to go because most of you or a lot of you, I should say, are probably going to be inclined to write a retest. So the first question on your test gives you uh, something that looks like this. I think it gives you one, two, three, four, five uh, of those, and it gives you one, two, three, four of those. And it says the ratio of stars to happy faces is... And then it says 4 to 5, or 4 to 5, or 4 to 5. And therefore, 80% are stars. Therefore, 80% are stars because 4 to 5. The answer to this question is, of course, false. And the reason why it's false is this is a part-to-part -part ratio. And you cannot make percentages out of part-to-part -part ratios because if I wanted to say what percent are stars, I would have to say four of the nine shapes are stars, and therefore 44.4% are actually stars. And conversely, 55.5% repeating are happy faces. But you cannot take a part-to-part -part ratio and convert it into a percent. In this class of 30 students, I would guess that 50% of you had the first question wrong. 50% of you had it wrong. You looked at 4 over 5 and said, my brain tells me this is 80%. So without doing much more thinking, I'm going to say true because I know 4 fifths is 80%. But that 4 over 5 does not represent 4 out of the 5 shapes. It represents 4 shapes to 5 shapes, which is part to part. Question 2 says $1.50 to 4 is equal to 450 to 7. Now, there's two ways to do this. There's two ways to do this. Well, there's more than two ways. There's, there's multiple ways to do this. You could actually say, well, let's pretend I didn't know that was 7. Let's just put an X there, just hypothetically speaking. Let's put a, an X there and see if I was to solve this, if that X is 7 when I solve it using cross-multiplication or proportional reasoning, then it would be true. And if I solve it and that X is not a 7, uh, then I can say false. It can't be 7 because it's actually this. So I'm going to write it like that. And I'm going to cross multiply this way to get 1.5x equals, and multiply this way to get 16, 17, 18, because 4.50 multiplied by 4 is 18. So the first thing I would do is do that. And then I would divide both sides by my coefficient. And if 18 divided by 1.5 is 7, then this proportion is true, that, that is equal to each other, or they are proportional. But if that x is not 7, if 18 divided by 1.5 is not 7, then the answer is false. So we'll take our calculator. What is 18 divided by 1.5 equals 12? So the answer is x would actually be 12. So therefore, the answer for question 2 is false. Another way you could have done it, is you could have just simply started with this, okay, with your 7 here as it was, and say, well, I multiply $1.50 times 3, so the bottom number also has to be 4 times 3, and 4 times 3 is not 7. 4 plus 3 is 7, but 4 times 3 is not 7. So still, either way you did it, you got an answer of false for the second question. Your third question, question 3, says a team's win-to-loss ratio is 4 to 10. Their win to loss ratio is 4 to 10. And therefore, they have lost approximately 71.4% of their games. Okay? So those, again, of all the questions in the true-false that people got wrong, almost half of you got the third question wrong as well. Because you said, well, if it's 4 to 10, 4 to 10 is 40%, and therefore it's false because it should be 40%, not 71.4. But in actuality, the number of games they the wins, which was 4, to the total number of games, which is 14, because you have to add their wins and their losses together, 4 to 14 is their win ratio, and their loss ratio, 
would be 10 out of 14. And when I convert 10 out of 14 to a percentage, 10 divided by 14, it is 71.4%. So the answer is true. Because their loss percentage is 10 games out of the 14 they played were losses. Therefore, 71.4% were losses. Question four. A 200 milliliter bottle of ketchup costs a buck 25, while a 500 milliliter bottle of ketchup costs three dollars. The 500 mil bottle is a better deal. So in order to solve this for question four, you had to first create. <coughs> the first thing you're going to have to do is create a ratio that shows the relationship between the cost and the volume of ketchup you get. So the first one was a dollar 25 for 200 milliliters. And the second one was $3 for 500 milliliters. Okay, so in order for us to compare two ratios of, um, or two rates, excuse me, two uh, rates of uh, cost, we have to be able to compare them in the same size. So in both of these, we want to either bring it up to the cost per 1,000 milliliters or the cost per 100 milliliters or the cost of any volume as long as both of them are the same. Kind of like when you add two fractions together, you need common denominators. When you compare two rates, you need to have them with the same second term. So in both these, I'm just going to use 100. And in order to do that, I would divide by 2. And I would find it that it's 62 and a half cents per 100 milliliters. And for this one, if I divide by 5 and divide by 5, it is 60 cents per 100 milliliters. So the question says, is the 500 milliliter bottle a better deal? It is. Yes, it is. This is the better deal because it's cheaper for the same amount of ketchup. So therefore, the answer for question 4 is true. They are, uh, the, the 500 milliliter bottle is a better deal. Question 5. It says the ratio, the ratio of girls, 12 girls, sorry, there's a ratio of 12 girls for every 10 boys at Athena school. So that's the ratio of, of girls to boys at Athena. If there are 150 girls, how many boys are there? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first set it up as a ratio of girls to boys. I'm going to physically write the words girls to boys. Girls will be my top number, in this case 12. And the ratio is 12 to 10, which will be proportional to 150 girls to however many boys there are. So here we could either figure out what do I multiply 12 by to get 150, which is not so easy, so I won't do that. The easiest way is to use proportional reasoning. 12x equals 1,500. Once I have my equation made, I will divide both sides by the coefficient of 12. And 1,500, 1,500 divided by the coefficient of 12 tells me that x is... 125. Now, a lot of people just stopped there, and that was their answer, and they didn't clarify what it was, nothing. And you're lucky I was generous, because for half of you, I should have taken marks off every single question, because these are all story problems. These are all context questions. And the last thing you should always write is this little symbol here. Therefore, 125 boys are at Athena. Right? Just because you got an answer doesn't mean I know what it means, right? You have to be able to you have to be able to put it into a context. So the answer would be therefore 125 boys are at Athena. Question number six. My favorite basketball player, or one of my favorite basketball players, Steph Curry, makes five point five three pointers per game. Now per game means per one game. If he made 451 if he made 451, I said four three-pointers in a season, how many games was the season? So the ratio is uh, three-pointers per game is going to be our ratio. So he made 5.5 three-pointers in one game how many three-pointers would he make in 451? So when I set it up as a proportion, that's how I'm going to set it up. 
5.5 three-pointers in one game is proportional to how many three-pointers in 451? And this is actually quite an easy cross-multiplication to do because when I multiply this way to my x, 1 times x is simply going to be just an x. And the other side will actually be my answer. I set this up wrong somehow. Oh, I did. Sorry. Let's back that up. I did make a mistake. I put my things in the wrong place. I'm solving the wrong ones. Okay, back up. Oh, just to there. So this was, he made 455 three-pointers. So that 451 has to be in the top, not in the bottom. How many games did he play? I made a mistake on that. So now we're going to multiply across here. It's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. When I multiply 5.5 by x, I get a coefficient of 5.5 or 5.5x equals 451. Divide both sides by 5.5, which is your coefficient, to isolate the variable, and therefore x equals 82. If I take 451, 451 and divide it by 5.5, I get 82. And therefore, this is the last thing you have to write, therefore, there are 82 games in a season, which is true. That's how many games there are in an NBA season. There are 82 games in an NBA season. Question seven. <clears throat> it says my mom can make 16.5 loaves of bread, L-O-A-V-E-S, loaves of bread from a 20 kilogram bag of flour. Okay. How many loaves of bread, how many loaves of bread can she make from 44 kilograms? So again, we're going to set it up as loaves, L-O-A-V-E-S, to kilograms of flour. So she can make 16.5 loaves out of 20 kilograms. How many loaves can she make from 44 kilograms? Set it up as my proportion. Solve it by multiplying across here to get 20x. Multiply 16.5 by 44. 16.5 multiplied by 44 is 726. And to isolate for x, to find out what x is, I'm going to divide both sides by 20. And I'm going to take that 726 and divide it by 20. And I get x equals 36.3. Now, I was fairly generous for this because obviously you can't make a third of a loaf. So how many loaves of bread can she make? It's just 36. Only one person in the entire class said she can make 36 loaves of bread. Because if you can only make a third of a loaf, you can't make a loaf. So the answer is, I can't remember. The answer is you can make 36 loaves of bread. Therefore, you can make, or mom can make, 36 loaves. Question number eight. Bob can type 84 words, can type 84 words in two minutes and 30 seconds. I can't tell you how many people had this one wrong, but anyway. How many words, how many words, how many words, or X words, can he make in three minutes? So the first thing you had to write down is I want to set up a ratio of words to time. Okay? So 84 words to 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, 2 minutes and 30 seconds is two different measurements of time. And we have to choose right now, what am I going to use? Am I going to use minutes or am I going to use seconds? And it's up to you. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use minutes. And 2 minutes and 30 seconds is equal to... 2.5 minutes or two and a half minutes not 2.30 minutes because 2.30 minutes is two minutes and 18 seconds completely different than two and a half minutes so down below here I'm going to put 2.5 and I can put minutes and then I don't know how many words it is but I know that it's three minutes so I'm going to put three down here and you know you're correct if this unit here and this unit here are the same. If they are different, if one of them is seconds and one of them is hours, 
if one of them is kilograms and the other one is grams, if one of them is liters and the other one is milliliters, you have to make a change and you have to convert one of them to the same unit so that all the terms in the bottom are going to be the same units. And once you do that, you can multiply to get 2.5x equals 240 and 12 is 252. Divide both sides by 2.5 and 252 divided by 2.5 equals 100.8. I'm not done yet. So therefore, Bob can type 100.8 or almost 101 words in three minutes. Right? Okay. I suppose you can type a third of a or a 0.8 of a word, 80% of a word. Right? But generally speaking, we want to either round that to almost 101 words or exactly 100 words. Almost a. Question number nine. A lot of people had this one wrong, and it's not hard, but I'm going to give you the answer. I was generous with the answers as long as you were close. So it says chocolate milk is a buck eighty for 400 milliliters. Express this cost as two different unit rates. So the first unit rate you're going to make, so since this is the rate, this is the cost, one unit rate would be divide both by four, and a dollar eighty divided by four is 90 cents. It's 45 cents per 100 milliliters. Now, there are so many people in this classroom that just put 100. They didn't tell me what the 100 was. It could have been liters. It could have been deciliters. It could have been kiloliters. Who knows? They didn't put it. So one unit rate would be 45 cents per 100 milliliters. It's called a deciliter, but we'll call it the unit rate. So that is your first unit rate, the cost per 100 milliliters. And another way to do that is to take that one and another most common unit rate would be to be one liter. Multiply it by 10, and you get $4.50 per one liter, or per liter. You don't need the one there if you're doing unit rate. Per liter. And the two I expected to see were those two. And since 80% of you didn't have them, that means that 30 people right now are scrambling to write this down because I know for a fact, Evan... Not everybody had those two unit rates. Even if you got a check mark, you might not have had those two unit rates written down. Question number 10. A rocket can travel 820 kilometers in 45 minutes. What is its speed in kilometers per hour? So the first thing I'm going to do is set it up as kil kilometers over time. I'm going to put 820 kilometers over 45 minutes. And it wants me to tell how many kilometers it is per hour. Right? So I cannot put one hour as my bottom unit right there. I have to put minutes. And I'm going to put, instead of an hour, I'm going to call it 60 minutes because that's what one hour is. And now my bottom term has the same units. I want to know how many kilometers it can go. Multiply across here to get 45x. Four, oh, I can't do that in my head. 820 and 60. 49,200. When you multiply across the other way. Take your 49,200. And divide it by the coefficient of 45, and you will get 1,093 at decimal 3 repeating, which of course is a third kilometers per hour. Okay, so the speed of the rocket, therefore the rocket travels 1,093 and a third kilometers per hour, or 1,093 decimal 3 repeating kilometers per hour. Question 11. 
Question 11 and question 16 were worth four points each. It says, Willie's Wacky Oils and Potions is selling a cure-all potion that comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Which potion is the best value? Well, the small one, so there are the prices for all three sizes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create unit rates for all of them. So $12 for 250 is equal to how much for 100 For the medium, same thing, $15 for 350 mils is equal to how much for 100 and the large is $20 for 440 mils how much is it for 100 mils so you could cross multiply here to get the answer but I'm gonna do it a different way I'm gonna divide 250 by 2.5 and I'm gonna divide the top by 2.5 I'm gonna divide the bottom by 3.5 and the top by 3.5 the bottom by 4.4 and the top by 4.4. And that's a second way you can get, you could cross multiply and you get 220, 250x equals 1200 or whatever you want to do. I'm just going to show you that there's a different way you could have done this. And if I do the math on those, then 12 divided by 2.5 tells me that the small is $4.80 for 100 mils. The medium is roughly $4.29 per 100 mils. And the large is roughly $4.55 per 100 mils. And therefore, since we're looking for the best deal, best deals, ladies and gentlemen, are not the most expensive ones. They are the cheapest ones. So the best deal, therefore, is medium because it's only about four dollars and twenty-nine cents per. per that was worth four points. So one point for each of these, and one point for identifying that medium is the best deal. Question number twelve. OMG! At least, at least a quarter of the class got this wrong. So question number twelve. So it's X dollars for one hour is equal to $588 for one week. So the first thing you realize is that I have hours here and weeks here, and I can't have that. Right? So I'm going to change this one week into hours. So there are 24 hours in a day. So one day, so one hour, multiply it by 24 to get one day. Right? So that would be 24 hours multiplied by seven days to get your week so 24 times 7 tells me that there are 168 hours in one week so instead of saying 588 dollars for one week 168 168 168 hours which is the same thing as one week so now i have my math set up my my terms are all in the same units i got hours here and hours here I multiply across my x first to get 168x equals, multiply across there to get 588, take my 588, take my 588, and divide it by the coefficient of 168, and it tells me that x equals 3.5, but I'm not done yet. A lot of people left it right there, but you're supposed to put therefore... Uh, the rate is three dollars and fifty cents per hour. I right, guess X is three fifty. Three point five. Three point five dollars is three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, question thirteen is eleven dollars and fifty cents for thirty is equal to X over forty. Here we don't have any units. It's simple. We don't have to change anything. We just have to multiply across here to get 30x. Multiply across here to get 40 times 1150. Oh. Oh. You get 460. Divide that by the coefficient. And you get x equals 15 decimal 3 repeating dollars. 
So roughly, therefore, $15.33 approximately is your, is your value. Question number 14. 1.6 liters in 30 minutes is the flow rate of a fountain or a tap or something is equal to how many liters would flow in 3.5 hours. Again, we have minutes here and hours here, and we can't have that. So I'm going to change these hours. You know what? I'm going to change it differently this time. I don't think anyone did this. I'm going to change minutes to hours. So 30 minutes is 0.5 hours. I'm going to change it this way. And I know most of you changed the hours to minutes, and that's okay as well. Multiply across here to get 0.5x. Multiply across the other way. So you get 5.6, divide both sides by 0.5, and you get 11.2. So x equals 11.2, and therefore, 11.2 liters flows in 3.5 hours. Just over 11 liters would flow out after three and a half hours. Question 15. 120,000 dollars for 25 golf carts is going to be equal to or proportional to 148,000 was it 148,000 even? Is that what I said it was? For X. I think that's what it was, wasn't it? Is that right? Was it 800? Okay. So when we multiply across this way, I'm going to get 120,000. X is equal to 148,800 multiplied by 25, which is 3,720,000. Divide both by the coefficient. And when I take that number and divide it by 120,000, I get 31. So x equals 31. And therefore, you could buy 31 cars with $148,800. That's a lot. That's probably what they are. Yeah, they're a lot of money. And your last question. Toby, Kale, and Big Poppy. So Toby ran uh, 50 meters in 7.8 seconds. Kale ran 50 meters in 7 seconds. And Big Poppy ran it 50 meters in 6.5 seconds. Now those of you who got it wrong probably put 50 meters in your bottom. But remember, speed is equal to distance over time. You can't put time over distance. It has to be distance over time. So the first thing we're going to do with all three of these is we're going to break it down into per one second. So once we get the three unit rates per second, I did that by simply dividing by 7.8 Dividing both turns by 7, and dividing both turns by 6.5. And once we get that, we know one second. But remember, our goal is to get per hour. And we said there's two ways you can do it. You can multiply top and bottom turn by 60 to get the distance per minute, and then multiply it by 60 again to get per hour. Here we're going to multiply by 3,600. Right, both terms. And the reason why 3,600 is because 60 times 60 is 3,600. And that's how many seconds there are in one hour. So that's going to be now one hour down here. And when I multiply that out, uh, Toby would be 23,076 meters in one hour. Kale would be 25,711 meters in one hour. And Big Poppy would be 
27,691 meters in one hour. But we're not looking for meters per hour, we're looking for kilometers. So because there's a thousand, Big Poppy would be going 27.961 kilometers an hour, Kale would be going 25.7 kilometers per hour, and Toby would be going 23.076 kilometers an hour. And since 25 kilometers is the speed limit, Kale and Big Poppy are speeding.